So this week we celebrated Memorial Day. And, and the explicit purpose of this holiday is not, as you may think, to, to eat a lot of hot dogs and grill out. That's part of it. But, but the purpose of this holiday, and it's in the name, is to remember. To remember what our military service men and women have done for us. And to remember that many of them have given up their lives. But this isn't, this isn't the only occasion where we're called upon to remember. A lot of our holidays are centered around remembering something. Fourth of July is about remembering the Declaration of Independence. The MLK Day, we remember Martin Luther King Jr. Christmas and Easter, we remember this specific event in history, and we celebrate that. But it's not just holidays that emphasize remembering. I mean, we have how many of you have photo albums in your home? You know, just tons of photo albums lined with picture after picture after picture. And Facebook will occasionally tell me something. It'll pop up and say, "This is what happened in your life three years ago." So we have these tools to help us remember our photo books, our Facebooks. We, we tie a string around our finger. We fill out a calendar. We have these rhythms. We have these rituals in our lives that encourage us to remember the past. They encourage us to remember what happened. And I think if we were to look at, at other cultures and other times all around our history, I think this isn't exclusive to us. Everybody has these rituals. <coughs> But have you ever wondered why? Have you ever wondered why we instinctively want to look back? I think this drive to remember is something that God has hardwired into our souls. And in today's passage, God will give us a glimpse into why He calls us to remember. So Joshua chapter 4, beginning in verse 19. Joshua 4, 19. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they had took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which He dried up for us until we passed over. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. That you may fear the Lord your God forever. If you look at this passage in Joshua, there are two central themes that we're going to look at about remembering. And the first is that this passage calls us to remember what God has done. Remember what God has done. So the Israelites at this time were at a point of of transition in their lives. They've been wandering through the desert for 40 years. But the time had finally come for them to enter the promised land. So God brings them to the shores of the Jordan River. When the priests who were holding the Ark of the Covenant, when they stepped their toes in the water, The water miraculously formed two walls and the ground dried up and the Israelites walked right through the Jordan River. This was almost a carbon copy of the famous miracle that you know from the Passover story. Remember the Israelites, they fled Egypt and what did God do? God divided the Red Sea so they could pass through and they could escape. In that particular miracle, the Red Sea happened at the beginning of their journey and now something similar happens at the very end of their journey. And this time, as they passed through the Jordan, the Lord gave them a specific command. He said, take 12 stones from the middle of the riverbed. These 12 stones are going to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Bring these stones out and then build a memorial out of them. And so after Joshua and the Israelites, they crossed the Jordan. The waters go back to like they were and they, they set up camp at a place called Gilgal. And they take those stones from the middle of the Jordan River and they build a memorial. This may have been in a circular shape, we're not exactly sure, but they build this this, this magnificent memorial out of these stones. So here's the question. Why did God call them to build a memorial? 
It's not because God likes stone memorials. It's not because God thought it was neat looking. God called them to do this so that they could remember. Verse 21, it says, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which He dried up for us until we passed over. Joshua says, one day your kids are going to come here to Gilgal. They're going to look at this and say, where do these smooth stones come from? And you're going to say, they came from the riverbed. And they're going to say, the riverbed, that doesn't make any sense. That's impossible. And you're going to say, exactly. It is impossible. But nothing's impossible with our God. This physical object, this memorial would be an enduring reminder for all future generations that God is real and that God did some amazing things for these people. This memorial was a tactile, a physical, something they could touch, a reminder that, of what God had done for them. It's kind of like how many of you have ever been to Washington, D.C.? All right, Gene and Millie were just there, so, so he, this is probably fresh on, on Gene's mind. Now, there's memorials all over the place, and they're, they're all wonderful, they're all great. But the times I've been to D.C., the, the one that sticks out to me the most is the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Y'all been there before? You know, it's a relatively modest display. It's this long wall with, with name after name on it. But it's so powerful. So powerful. You walk alongside of it. You look at name after name after name after name and you're speechless. It's a, it's a physical, a tactile reminder. Remember what these men and women did. That's kind of what this memorial would do too. It too was a relatively modest display. It's 12 stones. 12 stones arranged in a circle. But if you walked up to it, if you walked alongside of it, if you looked at it, you would be speechless. It was this physical, this tactile reminder. Remember what God has done. So this memorial would help future generations remember what God had done. But I'd imagine, too, that God's call for them to, to build this memorial, this, their, God's call for them to remember wasn't just for future generations. It was for them, too. See, again, the Israelites were at this point of transition. Their journey on the desert had ended, and they were about to embark on this greater adventure together. They were going to fight against cities that were bigger, stronger, tougher, and more cruel than they were. They were going to enter lands where the odds were stacked against them. They would be tempted to doubt God's provision. They would be tempted to give up. But in those moments of fear... In those moments of hardship and doubt, they could remember those 12 smooth stones. They could recall running their hands over the smooth surface. They could reminisce about laying those stones in this perfect arrangement. And they would remember everything that God had done. They would remember how God liberated their fathers and mothers from their Egyptian captors. How God parted the Red Sea so they could escape. They would remember how He gave them His gracious law. They would remember how he guided them with a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. They would remember having food on their doorsteps every single day. And they would remember how God parted this Jordan River. And so when they faced those difficulties, and they were going to face them, when they experienced fear and began to doubt, and they would experience fear and doubt, they could remember this. That if God had provided for them in the past, He would provide for them in the future. They would remember this Gilgal moment. In many ways, I think the Green and the Dean and the Foster families are, are experiencing their own Gilgal moments right now. They're at this point of transition. I mean, some of them have finished the journey of high school and they're about to embark on this different journey, the journey of college. The Greens have finished the journey of pregnancy and they're about to embark on this season with a fun-loving baby and toddler. 
And we're also at a point of transition in the year. In the, we're moving from spring into summer and all that that entails. And maybe in your own life, you are experiencing some sort of transition right now too. If that is you, seize this Gilgal moment. Reflect on all the ways that God has sustained you in the past. Remember every instance that He picked you up when you were down. That He opened a door when every door seemed shut. That He offered you grace when all you felt was pain. Remember every time that He guided your steps when you had no idea where to go. Most of all, Remember what God did for you in the gospel. Remember that you were a sinner who deserved God's wrath and judgment, but God sent you His Son to be a sacrifice. And He did this so He could turn you from a sinner into a saint, from an enemy into His child, from someone destined for hell to someone destined for life. And when you remember what God has done, the future won't seem as scary. If God took care of your yesterday, and if God took care of your eternity, God will take care of your tomorrow. So seize this Gilgal moment. Remember what God has done. So the first thing God tells us in this passage, just remember what I've done. And the second broad theme that we're going to see here is that this act of remembering, this act of remembering what God has done has a very specific purpose. So we ask the question, what is the reason that God wants us to remember? What is the reason that He wants us to have these Gilgal moments? And and Joshua gives us the answer to that in verse 24. He says, do this so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. So he says, God's purpose for remembering is twofold. First, We remember so we can point others to God. We remember so we can point others to God. He says, do this so that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord is mighty. See, one day people would come from far and wide to Gilgal. They would see this odd assortment of smooth rocks, and they would wonder how they got there. And someone could come along and tell them of all the ways that God had blessed His people. So the Israelites remembering here was for other people's good. There were people out there who needed to hear their story. They needed to know and worship the one true God. And this memorial, this little circle of stones, gave them an outlet for sharing that story. God's faithfulness to His people would ultimately impact the world around them. And I think the same is true with us. We need to remember all that God has done for us, not just for our own sake, but for others. There's probably someone else out there who needs to hear your story. If you've walked through suffering, someone else who's walking through suffering right now needs to hear your story. If you've parented difficult children, there are other young parents with children right now who need to hear your story. If you've toiled through a stressful workplace, other workers need to hear your story. And if God has saved you from your sins, made you a new creation, other sinners need to hear your story. So God didn't give the Israelites their story just for them. He didn't call them to remember just for them. And God didn't give you your story just for you. God calls us to remember for the sake of our friends, for our family, for our neighbors. God calls us to remember ultimately so we can point others to God. Our neighbors need our Gilgal moments. Let me just put a face on this. Richard's not here, so I can speak about him. For you Cedar Rock regulars, know Richard Walker well. Richard was the interim here before me. And uh, again, I'm going to brag on him because he's not here to tell me no. But when Richard, when I came here, Richard did something that I think is pretty unheard of and that he stuck around. You know? Uh, he stuck around. They, they, they stay here for I don't know, several months, almost a year, until they, they were called to Pine Ridge just down the road. But Richard has been through a lot in his ministry. He's a seasoned pastor. And God didn't give Richard his story just for him. I think in some ways God gave Richard his story for me. We would meet sometimes and he would 
give me some wisdom. He would tell me how God brought him through this or that or the other. And the same with Lynn and Katie. I needed his Gilgal moments, and he was willing to share those with me. There's someone out there like that that you need to share your story with too, that you can walk alongside them and, and, and be a Richard Walker to someone else. So the first purpose for remembering is that we can point our neighbors towards God. The second is that we remember so we can point our own hearts towards God. Look again in verse 24. It says, Remember that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Joshua says, look, I'm asking you to make this monument. God is asking us to make this monument so we will fear God, so we will honor and respect God. God's calling us to do this, Joshua says, so that we can yearn for the God behind everything that we've done. And a lot of times, that's not why we want to remember things. I think think too often, we confuse remembering what God has done with nostalgia. You know what nostalgia is? Nostalgia is is when we yearn for the past, we yearn for the way things used to be, and, and that's it. That's the end of the story. Let me give you an example. Uh, a couple of years ago, people people my age, my generation, started talking about NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys again. All right, y'all know who NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys are. If you don't, good for you. You're all the better off. All right, so the NSYNC, NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. These are late '90s boy bands, and uh, they were they were popular and stuff. But all of a sudden, they started scheduling reunion tours, and everyone was going crazy. Now, now objectively. In sync, Backstreet Boys, not good music, okay? I think of it the musical equivalent of jelly beans, okay? High fructose corn syrup packed into small bite-sized packages. That's each of their songs. They were popular in the late 90s. They broke apart, did their own solo stuff. And now, 15 years later, everyone wants to watch the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC again. Now, let me ask you a question. Why were they all of a sudden popular again? Did their music all of a sudden get better? No. Did... Did it all, was it objectively good in the first place? No. They were popular again because they were familiar. Some people in my generation, I'm not going to include myself in this category. I got my own nostalgia things. They were yearning for a simpler time. They didn't have bills. They didn't have student loan debt. They didn't have all these responsibilities. And so they yearned for the way things used to be. It was comforting. That's nostalgia. You know what nostalgia is? Now, I know some of you are already thinking, you know, these stinking millennials, you know, it's all, they're, they're really bad at this. But before we start bashing millennials, every generation does this, doesn't it? You know, I, I've seen the infomercials for Elvis's Greatest Hits, or Sweatin' to the Oldies, or Mayberry RFD. Last night we were flipping through, and uh, MP, not, PBS had on some sort of, like, 60s reunion tour. And so all these musicians from the 60s were coming back and playing these songs that, you, you know, some of you may know. But again, a lot of times, not all the time, a lot of times we yearn for these things not because they're objectively good, but because they're familiar. You you connect these things with a simpler time when you were younger. You didn't have the debts. You didn't have all the the, the bills. You didn't have the aches and the pains and the stresses or the cares. And so nostalgia is normal. Everyone has nostalgia. Maybe you miss bell bottoms and Red Rider BB guns. I miss Saturday morning cat cartoons and my action figures. Maybe you missed certain program or a song in church. I missed some certain things we did in church back when I was a kid, too. And, and for those of you who don't feel nostalgia yet, you know, Amanda and, and Sarah and Kyle, some of you teenagers, you know, it's going to happen. All right. One day, these little puppies. All right. You're going to think, man, you know, kids nowadays, they're so missing out. They don't have fidget spinners. You know, what's wrong with them? One day, this is going to be the coolest thing ever. Again, um, by the way, I don't Casey gave this to me, so I, I blame Casey. This. I didn't buy this myself. Nostalgia. But here's the limits of nostalgia. Nostalgia is fine, but here's the limitations. With nostalgia, the end goal is the past itself. The thing you're yearning for is the way things used to be. And that's it. And nostalgia is okay, But when God calls his people to remember, it's something much more than that. God didn't call the Israelites to remember their past so it would be comforting. He didn't call the Israelites to remember their past so they could relive it. He called them to remember the past so that they would look beyond the surface level stuff 
all the things that happened. They would look beyond that and see the God who sustained them through it. When God calls them to remember, the end goal wasn't the past himself. The end goal was the God who walked with them every step of the way. And the same is true for us as individuals and as a church. When God calls us to remember, it's not because the past is comforting or because we, can, we, want, we want to relive it. God calls us to remember so we can look beyond the surface level stuff. Right? Backstreet boys sweating to the oldies, fidget spinners. Look beyond that and see the God whose hand was at work in our lives every step of the way. And when we remember the past in this way, with an eye towards seeing and, and discovering God's faithfulness, we gain a greater awe of our God. We gain a greater reverence for God. And we are better equipped to live, not in the past, but to live in the now and to live in the future. Because again, we know the same God that sustained us then is going to sustain us now and will continue to sustain us. So we need our Gilgal moments, not just so we can yearn for the past, but so we can yearn for God himself. Greens, deans, fosters, God has brought you through a lot to get to this point. Graduates, God has brought you through a lot of sports practices and late night homework assignments and classes you didn't think you needed, but you had to take anyway because the school said so. Greens, God has brought you through a lot of the pains and frustrations of pregnancy. And your story has a purpose. Look back at what God has done. Recognize how God was at work in your life. Praise Him for it and tell other people so they can worship the same God who sustained you through it. And church, our story has a purpose too. No matter where you've been, no matter the hardships you've faced, look back at what God has done. And let's praise Him for it and tell other people so they too can worship the God who has walked with us. Cedar Rock, you have, you have some homework for you to do. One assignment. Ready? Remember what God has done. Remember what God has done. Look back at your life. Reflect on how God sustained you and let your story spur you to worship God and tell other people about your Savior. You have a Gilgal moment. Seize that Gilgal moment. Would you pray with me? Father, you've given us all a story. You've given us as a church a story. You've brought us through difficult times. You've walked us through trials. You've walked with us through the great joys of life too. I pray that today we would reflect back on everything that you've done. And not yearn for the past itself, but yearn for you who walked with us every step of the way. God, I pray if there's anyone here who doesn't know you, who can't look back and say, you know what, I don't see how God was working in the past because I don't know God. I don't, I don't have my, a faith in Jesus Christ. I pray that you would convict them of their sin, help them to see that without Jesus that they are doomed for hell, but with Jesus they are bound for life, for eternity. I pray if you were working in anyone's hearts today that they would com commit their lives to you before they leave this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.